Welcome to WizThrift, your one-stop shop for all things mystical, magical, and fantastical. Hello everybody, my name is WizThrift, my name is also Colton, and I am here today with a friend of mine, the Crafty DM, or Chris, and could you give yourself a little introduction for me, friend? Yeah, like, like uh, Colton said, I'm uh, Chris Burson, aka the Crafty DM. Um, I, I guess I, I would classify myself as being a, a creator now. I've been uh, playing Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of other games since 1977. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm an avid, I'm an avid fan of the game and fantasy adventures. And uh, after this pandemic, I've been recently uh, working on or learning how to and create digital maps. And uh, before that, I was making uh, uh, fantasy terrain and uh, terrain for uh, miniature war games uh, from scratch, painting miniatures, all, all the the whole gambit basically. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot of your stuff, and I've seen your recent stuff of digital art. And let me tell you, you crafty is definitely a good way to describe you. You you, ha you have a lot of skill, so that's I'm excited to talk Thank to you, you about it. Awesome. Well, you said you've been playing since 1977. What what got you started on role playing games? Uh, it was kind of funny because um, you know back in 1977, I wasn't even really aware of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. So the how I ended up getting introduced was I was actually just in the neighborhood. I was I was probably about a I probably about 12 or 13, and um, I was going over to a friend's house and he had a basketball hoop and I didn't know. He usually just lets us use his basketball hoops. I was sitting out front just shooting baskets in front of his house yeah. and he came out on the balcony and he asked me, Hey, Chris, um, do you guys want to, you, you want to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons? I'm like Dungeons and Dragons. I said, that sounds kind of like a baby game, yeah. like cap the hat or something. <laughs> right? And he says, no, 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 come on up and, uh, and give it a shot. Yeah. And so uh, I went upstairs and sat down with him and two of his friends that I'd probably never met before. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that happened was everybody was arguing over what character they had to be. And um, this was early, early in Dungeons Dragons. They were in a, the game came in a blue box. You could only play four classes. Yeah. And so everybody argued uh, about what character to be. And then they said, uh, well, since he's the new guy, he's got to play the cleric. And I'm like, cleric, what in the hell's a cleric? I didn't even know what that <laughs> yeah. was. And uh, it was a yeah, long story short, you know, I sat down and played my first session and uh, I ended up being saving the party. I was because my character was a uh, was a half elf. I guess he couldn't be affected by uh, some of the effects of a ghoul that attacked the party. So I was able to, okay. to, to keep everybody alive, save, save the party and take out the ghoul. Yeah. It was pretty fun. And so I got hooked from there and I went down and bought my first set of Dungeons and Dragons. And then I never looked back from there. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> when did you start creating your own stuff? Was it like really quickly after that or did it take a while? Yeah. I mean, yeah, for the first, I mean, when I was a kid, I was, I was drawing maps, you know, back then you didn't have any computer graphics or anything like that. So it was yeah. just pencils and paper. And a lot of times I didn't even have graph paper, but, uh, gotcha. but, but then, uh, as you know, when I went from junior high to high school, the graph paper became a little more readily available. Mm -hmm. I was creating maps and then, um, they used to come out with like blank, um, hex sheets, yeah. blank hex sheets. So I started, I started making my first worlds back then. And, um, and it was pretty fun. I mean, it, it's still hella fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's oh, even, yeah, yeah. it's even more fun. The community oh, yeah. is a lot more socially accepting of, mm -hmm. of, uh, individuals. And, um, you know, when I was, when I was a kid, I was, I was teased because I played Dungeons and Dragons in high school. I mean, I, I still have the books there. They look dog-eared and torn, but I remember in high school having my D and D books thrown across the quad and things like that. So, <laughs> oh my I experienced some bullet, but uh, I'm still playing. Yeah. I never gave it up. Hey, mm -hmm. that's that's fantastic. Do you feel like those experiences of being bullied for this thing that you loved did that like like harden your resolve, or did you did you ever stop for a little bit because of that? Uh, I did, I did stop for a while, mm -hmm. but, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't because of fear. I had a group of friends, um, that played 
And, you know, and then I had another group of people that played with me, but they just didn't want me to be talking about it in high school when we were at school. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I did stop for a while, but it was more, uh, more work related later when I was in the postal service. Okay. Um, even when I was in the military, I, I still had, I figured out a way to play. So, nice. um, but uh, it was it was more uh, it was more work related. I just had too many hours, so there was a short time, and so I I missed that gap between um, I would say third edition and fifth edition. Okay. So I picked up fifth edition, and I was just like, wow, you yeah. know, I'm definitely going to play this. So yeah. that's when I decided to come back to it. Dang, so, that's awesome. I mean, a lot of people yeah. chose to skip that 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 the uh, gap between third and fifth. So you're not you're not missing out on much. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was more because of work related mm -hmm. things that I was doing at the time. But yeah. uh, but uh, but I still would go out in the garage and I'd, I'd take a look at my miniatures, which I've got hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of miniatures that still need painting. Yeah. You know, and um, OK, where did you, you know, get terrain? All, oh, yeah, of course. Go terrain. You, you, you mean you make your own train, but where did you get all your miniatures from? Did you make them yourself or where did those come from? Um, I was just buying and I'm collecting at the time okay. when I, you know, when I first got my first jobs, you know, working at Burger King, you know, probably two thirds of my check, I'd pay for gas and D and D stuff or gas and gaming stuff, yeah. <laughs> gas and gaming. you know, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. and, uh, yeah, did that, did that most through my high school years. And then, um, for the portion when I was overseas uh, on the Midway, there was one point when we we're out on the Indian Ocean for 157 days straight at sea. Wow. And there really wasn't much to do. So I actually created my own role playing games then. Wow. You know, I mean, there was there was no way I well, I did. I did order one, but it, it came about halfway through that tour mm -hmm. on the Indian Ocean. And uh, it wasn't even Dungeons and Dragons because I had no way of knowing how to how to contact uh anybody at Dungeons and Dragons to get a copy of the book, but I did get a little business card for Avalon Hill games and okay. they had a role-playing game system called powers and barrels. And, and I played that for a long while too. That sounds awesome. I mean, that's true. I've, I've noticed that those who actually go outside of Dungeons and Dragons and other, and this one role-playing game are able to bring a lot to D and D because you're able to learn so much from, from the other games yeah yeah and then uh you know it, it it brings it brings a different light so it, it you know Dungeons and dragons everybody wants to make it their own yeah. and so uh you know i obviously homebrew a lot when i play my games and uh i'll be honest nine times out of ten though i'm i'm usually dungeon mastering um it's hard for me to find somebody that's 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 got enough um i would say initiative to want to actually uh play a game yeah you know or run a game where i could be a where i could be a player mm -hmm. but but in my earlier years i did play i haven't i haven't played a character in fifth edition yet to be honest with you i've dungeon mastered only oh man we got we gotta <laughs> fix that uh we can we yeah. can talk to brandon he he's a pretty good dm i'm also i i'm I would say yeah, nine times out of ten, I, I DM as well. So like we we could we should get a game together because I think you would have a really fun time playing a character in the game. No, oh, yeah, I've, I've created enough of them and I thought <laughs> up enough of them that uh, that they're sitting over there just waiting and chomping at the bit to play. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. You mentioned a little bit ago about how you still have all of your books. So do you have all of your stuff from back when you started in high school? Um, I would say about maybe 90% of it. Um, I had a group of friends, a shout out to a friend of mine, Dennis Allman, and another friend of mine on the, out in Florida, uh, Bob Bean. But um, some of that stuff I left over at my friend's house. Okay. And, and he just had, he was an older guy and he had, he, had, uh, he had a garage. And so that was the place we always played. So, you know, there's probably a few of my books that got intermixed with his. Mm -hmm. I know I don't have my my original, the the three D&D books. There was like Men and Magic and then uh, and then the uh, the Monsters book. I think I only have one of those one of those books. OK, but uh, but I have the rest of them. OK, that's really awesome because yeah. I I don't have time to read all the books, but I love collecting old books. I have a bunch of just second edition where it's like they focus on like 
creating kits for the wizard and the barbarian and the fighter and there's one about mm -hmm. castles there's one about weapons like i just i love collecting older books because there's just so much to pull from them that we can incorporate into our our modern games oh wow yeah yeah some of the, some of the ones i i had too that they, they just decayed because mm -hmm. of, um before they came out with dragon magazine gotcha. there was a thing called the judges guild journal and it was on newsprint it was like wow. it was like a regular newspaper yeah and you opened it up and it it had tables in there stories and backgrounds for characters a little bit of art and so i i had about three or four of those and and i think i only got one but they are so fragile yeah oh man. newspaper uh, especially that's that stuff rips really easily so that's yeah yeah <laughs> dang yeah well, that, that's that's so cool i love i'm only 25 years old still pretty young but I, I love talking to people who were there from the very beginning and and getting their insights on what what it was like f when the game was just starting out you know now we have so many different additions and different ways to play but what do you think has been the biggest difference from from 1977 to to now in 2021 Oh, the, the, the content that you're getting in the books mm -hmm. and, and the effort that people are putting forward in, in writing is, is so much better. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I open up my old D and D books and I kind of think to myself, how in the hell did I ever run games? I said, I mean, 99% <laughs> of it have to had to be off my imagination. Yeah. I mean, all I had was a few stats for some monsters mm -hmm. and, and and literally no story yeah and uh and so it's it's really nice i mean when third edition came out there was there were some really nice things in third edition mm -hmm. but um it's it it has just gone leaps and bounds yeah and uh you know because originally dungeons and dragons was intended to be more of a a kind of a an extension of a war game yeah and so um you know that's that's how it originally started, and mm -hmm. and I'm not saying knocking any kind of war games because even a lot of the war games now are are, are really neat. But mm -hmm. if if you were to hand somebody, I think <laughs> the first edition books, and then they would just look. I think they would look more lost because they feel like they got ripped off for what they paid yeah. for. Yeah. Uh, and I don't I don't mean to knock Gary Gygax or anything, yeah. but yeah. I mean I mean they had all the rules in their head. And then, you know, it just got assimilated to you when you when you played or you joined with people. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. just Thacko as compared to Armor Class now, like, I, I've, I've read those books. I, I have the content. I don't understand uh -huh. it. So, like, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just was ridiculous. I, yeah. you, you know, always needing an 18 or 19 to hit a guy in plate mail. And yeah. like, well, we got him cornered. We got him on the ground. We got him pinned. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, I really think the addition of like advantage and disadvantage and inspiration, you know, these things that help kind of move the game along. I think it's a, it's a really good in addition to the game because that was one of my biggest things when I first started playing. I'm like, I'm literally right next to him and I have a big sword and magic powers. How am I not hitting this guy? Like, what's going on? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I remember uh, a, an early game and it was, I think it was actually a different role playing game and they kind of gave a different value for uh, chain mail. Okay. So chain mail could stop bladed weapons real easy. Yeah. But uh, blunt weapons, it, it didn't do much to. And so one of the players thought he'd get smart and he paid a bunch of money to have a sleeping bag made out of chain mail. So when he was camping in the evening, and it was kind of funny because everybody was laughing because he paid a bunch of money for yeah. this big chain mail sleeping bag. And he says, well, I'll be safe if I happen to not wake up when we get attacked. Yeah. And the next thing that happened was I guess a couple of trolls with big clubs came over and he said the, cha the dungeon master told him that the chain mail bag was so heavy that he had a hard time getting out and they were just literally beating the crap out of him in the chain mail bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh was man, fun. that's hilarious. That's just like uh, one of those moments where you think you're outsmarting someone and then it just, just 
yeah. backfires so hard. Yeah, yeah. I think I, th- I think the dungeon master probably intended it that way. Oh yeah, no, no. He he probably <laughs> he probably was gonna have some bandits or something come in, and then he's like, nah, trolls with with uh, with clubs. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Well, speaking of your writing, you just mentioned the writing and how much it's changed and improved. I've seen a lot of your stuff through World Anvil and just, you know, just you posting it to the Dungeon Forge. I'm really impressed with your writing and your homebrew worlds. How have you gotten so good at it? Um, Believe me, it was just a, a matter of embracing everything as soon as I got hit with the fifth edition. Okay. Um, cause I, I'll be honest. I only picked up the fifth edition, like, like maybe three years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. That's probably when I got back into the dragons and, and, and started writing. So when I started reading the content, I, uh, you know, I always had the stories in my head. The nice thing about world anvil is that actually gives you the cues and helps you. Oh, okay. so, um, so that's, that helps part of it, but, that, but I've always had kind of an imaginative, uh, way i always want to make sure that that uh you know i put some flavor in my world yeah Yeah. and so uh like i said when i feel the inspiration sometimes i'll i'll just i'll just start writing and and my wife gets frustrated because i'll be getting up at two three in the morning and i'll just start typing away and uh and putting stories down yeah and uh and things like that and and it's kind of nice actually with the way world anvil puts it together they uh they inspire you because right now, like they have a summer camp, so they have a bunch of articles, and then they suggest that you compete. All you do is 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 write an article based off one of the subjects that they they give you there. Okay. And then you can enter it in a contest to try to win, uh, you know, different prizes. I haven't won any prizes or anything like that, but but I've always I've always enjoyed the writing aspect of it, and I've really been able to tackle it now that I've retired. Yeah. And uh, you know, before I would I would it would all come off the top of my head and I'm still, I'm still easy, uh, can easily ad hoc for things, but, yeah. uh, but I, you know, I like, I like establishing the world. And I, I actually had planned when, once I picked up fifth edition, I was planning on creating my own world. I, I told myself I wanted to create a world that was, you know, kind of an archipelago world with water, with a lot of islands and smaller continents. And um, when I started it, at the same time, I started probably a couple of weeks before I was getting my D&D group together for the first time, um, Ghosts of Saltmarsh came yep. out. And it was probably one of, you know, the original Sinister Secret of Saltmarsh was one of my all-time favorite adventures. Yeah. And I thought, well, this will definitely fit in the world. This will save me some time mm-hmm. and give me some little tidbits. And then I'll just build the world from that. Yeah. So so that that's how it works and that's that's the that's the advice i'd give to any anybody who wants to write get get a module or get something like that kind of just look through it see how it's written okay and then uh expand on it expand your own expand your own flavor and your imagination there's nothing wrong if your world is totally different than than what that one is Mm -hmm. just uh just go where it inspires you and then and then you know now with a uh, backstories, I mean, when we played Dungeons and Dragons when we were younger, there was no such thing as backstories <laughs> for characters. I mean, you're just going out for gold and killing monsters. Yeah, like that's all you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd run into them. How, ma- how many hit points does the room have? How much gold does it have? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once the backstories came, you know, make use of those mm-hmm. and 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 put it in your world because you know your your world is is your adventurous world too. So. That's, I mean, that's, that's some really fantastic advice. I, and I love that you've made this whole world just based off of the ocean and the sea. Did your time at actually on the sea and on the water, did that inspire you to make this world? Oh, some of it, some of it definitely did. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but I was always fascinated with like uh, the sea and pirates since I was a little kid. Uh, You know, I'm as far as I can remember back, probably, I probably, you know, my first, my first 15 years <laughs> as a kid, almost, almost every birthday was almost pirate themed. <laughs> That's awesome. So that was, that was the first thing that, that, that got me. And then when yeah. I got into Dungeons and Dragons, I got fascinated with castles and all the other mm-hmm. wonderful things that, that, 
Dungeons and Dragons brings to you. Yeah. Well, I, I think the ocean and just water is, it's so cool because it's, you know, it's, it can be the most fun and like bring people together. It's an awesome thing. Or it can be the deepest, scariest thing out there. And, oh, yeah. and dangerous and it can kill you or give you life <laughs> I, I i think water just in general is a very interesting concept so i i i definitely would love to know not today but like you know just actually you know is there a favorite monster that you've created for this world that's just islands and continents oh yeah well i've well i've got the uh the revenant shark Okay. In okay. in the center, at one point in my world is is at one up there in the northern region of my world is a magical maelstrom, That's and cool. so the maelstrom, at points depending on on basically uh, certain certain strengths of magical tides, mm -hmm. and and the moons, uh, will get bigger or smaller, and it uh, it will deposit people, but okay. the revenant shark is a creature they don't know where it came from or if it's an inhabitant of this world by uh by looking for souls it's it's basically a very gigantic undead shark it's we're talking like 300 400 feet wow of revenant shark Dang. and uh it 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 searches for souls and uh wow. it's it's pretty mean and yeah, uh, I, I you could actually look it up you could actually look it up yeah. on my world anvil site the the I, i've statted it out and, yeah and i will i'll have to go back and check because i've now that i've been creating more stuff yeah. i want to make sure that it's still a pretty dang tough creature uh, i mean <laughs> yeah it's is it a legendary creature does it have like legendary actions and stuff oh yeah okay yeah, has, That's, yeah, i was yeah. gonna say it sounds pretty scary i just as a person, I, I love swimming and everything, but if I get touched in the water by anything, I start freaking out. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Believe me, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Huntington Beach, mm -hmm. and and you know when they when they put out the movie Jaws, you know before they made the movie Jaws, they actually tested the sharks over there. They tested the remote control sharks in the water <laughs> wow. over near us. I remember them seeing a. I remember okay. as a kid riding with a friend, friend in a boat. We we lived on the water, yep. and I remember riding with a friend with a boat, and he, uh, we managed to see them taking the, the the shark out of the water. But we were thinking, holy crap! If we'd seen that thing in the water, oh my we gosh. would have freaked out too. That's crazy! Wow, man, I can definitely I can see where you got some inspiration for your world now. Uh, yeah. That, wow. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, I got a I got a fascination with sharks, but I'm yeah. also afraid of them too. So <laughs> yeah. oh, for sure. No, I think uh, there's something about things that can hurt us or kill us that it's just there's there's a fascination, but also it's very scary. You know, you don't want to get too mm -hmm. close to it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, another question I had is, what type of media or entertainment has influenced you in in your creating, or that you've just really enjoyed? Okay, well, I mean, if you go way back to when I was younger, the original, the original Hobbit and oh, the of Lord course. of the Rings animations. Yeah. Uh, later on in high school, um, Heavy Metal. Okay. Okay, the movies for Heavy Metal. Um, I was a big fan of uh, the Elric series when I was in high school. Yeah. And Conan. Yeah. And uh, John Carter of Mars. Nice. You know, read all those Lord of the Rings, obviously, and The Hobbit in, in book form. Actually, they they required those uh, as reading in my high school. So, really? Yeah. Dang, that's a cool high school. Yeah, <laughs> it was a pretty cool high school for my yeah. for my uh, first couple of years in Huntington Beach. It was it was a really cool high school. That's awesome. So, wow. other than uh, like I said, you know, a little bit a little bit of hazing and. Yeah. And uh, you know, bullying of uh, Dungeon Dragons fans, but uh, you know, I still made it through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. dang, that's fantastic. I mean, it's you. You talked earlier about how the community is so accepting. It. How does it make you feel that you know now celebrities and really like anybody at least knows or has played the game? How, how does that make you feel? It makes me. I. 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 I actually am. You know, it's nice because mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know. It it's it shows that uh, you know things are changing and that that people are becoming more accepting of things. I mean, if you think about, you know, 
you know, things in the past, you know, there's, there are things that people get subjected to or stigma, yeah. you know, in, in all, in all manners, not just Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, you know, you know, people, people give way to either, uh, you know, popular sentiments or, uh, well, unpopular sentiments, yeah. or <laughs> however, you know, and, and fads and all those kind of things. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, been, been around long enough. I, I, I've seen, uh, I've seen the good side of it and the bad side of it. And I always try to just, uh, you know, welcome people. That's... You know, I, I know even some of my nerdy friends were, were would, that, uh, would get upset with me when I'd bring somebody new into the game that didn't, didn't fit their mold, you yeah. know? So it, it happened both ways, but, yeah. uh, you know, we're stronger for it. That's so. true. That's true. I mean, that's, I mean, that's why we play this game, right? Is just connect with other mm -hmm. people. I, I, I've met so many people. I've made so many amazing friends just through this, you know, this silly role-playing game. This this silly game that yeah. we play in a fantasy <laughs> world together. It's really not silly because it's 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 serious and it's storytelling, and that's a really important thing. But you know, we're we're playing make believe in our heads, and we're, we're putting it out on paper and and to the internet and everything. And I just that's that's what I love about it so much, and you mm -hmm. know, being able to have conversations like this with people that I, I never would have met or interacted with if I if I'd never even gotten into this fantasy stuff. Yeah. So Yeah, that and that's 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 what's amazing about it. Yeah. From where it's it's come from to where it's going. Yeah. I I, I love that. And you, you seem to have such a, a vast knowledge and just just a lot of information and, and skill when it comes to this game and, and to storytelling in general. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Just you. sometimes, sometimes I, I run into writer's block, or yeah, uh, yeah. or I'll, I'll get burned out, and I'll take a step away from it, and then, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you're creating your own stuff all the time, you know, it's it's nice every once in a while to grab grab something. I used to call them can scenarios, but yeah. uh, you know, I mean, grab the module and use it because mm -hmm. they have a, more than likely your players are going to do something different than, than is even an expected in the module <laughs> that you'll end up having to make it your own or make up something. Exactly. So. No, that's, that's the hard part that I found about adventure writing is, you know, for me personally, I, I feel like I'm pretty decent at, at improvising and, and setting up situations on the fly. But when it comes to, to modules and other adventures from other people, it's hard because you, you're going with this story and you can't always improvise. So it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. As long as you get to the end point, that's the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was, I was running, uh, I was, I was running the, uh, the Isle of the Abbey for my mm -hmm. players last, this last weekend. And, uh, my party, uh, had gone through everything. I have a really big party. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, I had to I had to go and, and change the creatures in it because my characters wanted to pursue some of their their own uh, backstories yeah. and stuff in their backstories. So I have a party, you know, Isle of the Abbey was probably meant for for players. I think probably about fifth or sixth, maybe seventh level, mm -hmm. you know. And I got a party of uh, ninth level adventures, and not only do I have just four of them, I have seven of them in my party. That's a lot of and power. So, that's, that's, yeah. that's a lot going on. I mean, yeah. So I had to, I had to, I had to change the creatures up, and then, uh, and then, like my, like my, my group does, they over, they overanalyze things, and they think they looked at everything, but they missed just a couple secret doors in there. Yep. So they were, you know, right near the right when we were getting ready to wrap up the evening session, you know. They were frustrated because they hadn't found any they, they had gone into the winding way and they hadn't yeah. found any of the the treasure rooms yet they just found the fake ones uh -oh. and dealt with all the traps yeah and and so i gave them a shot i said you can go back to any of the rooms and start looking and the one room that had the secret door they were so insistent that they thoroughly looked yeah. i had to improvise and put a secret door somewhere else <laughs> just to get them to go in i yeah. wanted them to go in and find it because i yeah. i wanted the the final uh the final encounter so that's where we left it off yeah. was the, the final encounter nice but uh but i did have to put in a secret door so there's some ways you got to improvise yeah but. yeah and i think that's <laughs> yeah it takes a lot of skill and a lot of just thinking on the fly to be able to do stuff like that because yeah, it's it, it it can be difficult, but that that's awesome. I'm glad that you were able to to figure that out, and hopefully the players felt validated for for their hard work. 
Oh yeah, they were they were they were joking about it. They say, "Oh, all we have to do is just harangue and harass the, the yeah. DM enough, and and screw up enough to, <laughs> to yeah. that it'll actually help us." Yeah. So, yeah. and uh, you know, I'll be honest, I don't want to see them all die or anything. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, I mean, they do something stupid. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you gotta have consequences, and sometimes that does lead to death, and maybe a TPK here or there. I have uh, recently experienced yeah. that, but you know, wow. <laughs> you also, yeah, you, you, I. I like to have my players they're, they're the heroes they're they're kind of like the chosen mm -hmm. ones and so I, I like them to feel cool and to feel powerful but I'll still make it high stakes and give them a challenge so. yeah yeah every once in a while you gotta wake them up yeah uh, you gotta yeah. you gotta humble them because they they yeah. think uh ah, we're unkillable <laughs> no you're not <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's that's that was the issue with this one, and and so when I got it got to uh, to upgrade the creatures, I said, okay, well, this is how they usually resolve situations where yeah. they've got a wizard in the party, and you mm -hmm. know, obviously, fireball or lightning. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So, so I had some creatures in there that were resistant to those things, so it it made it a lot more interesting. So they were they were sweating it a couple times. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. But, uh, I have a player. It's her first time playing. I mean, she's been playing for over a year now, this character, but she loves Fireball. Ever since she could cast it, she always casts Fireball. And uh, yeah, if, whenever I put somebody in there that's resistant or uh, they, they, they have a ring of evasion or something that helps them pass their save, she's always like, wait, what? So, yeah. <laughs> Darn it, I didn't kill everybody in the room. <laughs> dang it. I can't set the world on fire? Gosh, dang yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I got a I got a new player in my group too. She's um she's playing a uh, a tiefling and she actually took a, a kind of a unique she, this is her first time playing Dungeons and Dragons, so she had asked to join us and so for her, her first time done playing Dungeons and Dragons, she I had to incorporate her in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a group of ninth level players when she asked. Yeah. So she's actually playing a a tiefling fighter that uh is is a sci fighter. You really know, cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty interesting. She she chose some some lighter weapons, mm -hmm. but uh, and so the party was a little uh, probably questioning her her choices at first. But uh, she's she's proven herself now. That's nice. So she's been she's been useful in being able to use some of those telekinetic uh, yeah. abilities and things like that. That's so that's really cool. That's awesome. Dang. Mm -hmm. Well, as we're as we're getting into the the later part of the interview here. Um, so we met through the Dungeon Forge. We met through some guys that who yes. we work with, we create with, and create for. Uh, so what is, like, for you, what motivates you to to make all the stuff that you've been making? What, what helps you get that out? Well, uh, at first it was it was it was the fact for lack of money i used to make my own terrain you know? <laughs> okay yeah, yeah you know and 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 uh you know when i was overseas i had no way to no way to store the stuff so yeah. i was making my own miniatures and counters and boards and all those kind of things but then um you know i got i got involved in warhammer and that needed terrain and it used to frustrate me when i would um go to a warhammer game and i'd see these beautifully painted armies and 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 play with these people and they would have a piece of binder paper you know with the word forest written on it and they would lay it down on the table and i'm like so so <laughs> i started that, that that's when i started making terrain yeah and and i could i the first time i made it i showed up uh, i made some for myself and everybody when we played our games wanted to buy the stuff from me wow I mean, they said, oh, I love this stuff so much. I got to have it. How much do you want for it? So, well, you know, sometimes it was friends. I would just give it and give it to them because it didn't cost me much mm -hmm. to make. And then I would make new stuff. Later on, I, I gave a shot at selling the stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I showed up at a game convention and, and I made a bunch of trees and hills and just basic stuff. And I showed up at the flea market and sold it. And I, I made about 800 bucks. Not bad. And... Uh, and so I continued for a while. I actually, before I became Crafty DM, I, I had a I had a little side company I called Battlefield Props. That's cool. And uh, and I uh, started selling this train. Then all of a sudden, the people that were paying the big money to be in the dealer's room were upset with me because I was showing up at the flea market with table-ready terrain mm -hmm. and selling it for the same price of the stuff that people had to assemble or <laughs> paint. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. put together 
and uh so there was a while they got me they the couple of the merchants actually got me kicked out of the wow. out of the uh the the uh the flea market dang i still managed to sell my stuff because everybody was asking me what hotel room yeah was yeah, I yeah, yeah come buy it later and then the <laughs> next year i went and spring some money for uh for a dealer's room and i ended up sitting in the dealer's booth right next to the lady that was the main complainer oh um, man it was it was it was actually joyous because uh, i'm sure i'm sure that was because great. it was this lady this lady didn't she didn't she didn't really have any any real care for the games what happened was she she just managed to get a whole bunch of her husband's inventory in a divorce oh and she was just there gotcha. to sell the stuff and make mm-hmm. money and uh and so when I was dropping all that stuff down, it was kind of nice seeing, you know, my buildings and all the things that I was making. You know, they're picking up my stuff. Why? Because it's painted and it's ready to put on yeah. a table. We're going to go play a game with this yeah. stuff. So. That's awesome. So that was fun for a while, but I, I had to stop because I was putting in a lot of hours mm-hmm. and and it, you really weren't making as much as you think you were. But I was having fun making the stuff. So now I mainly make it just for for kicks and in, in my, you know, my group. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking on my. I might. I might go back to putting some on Etsy and things yeah. like that. But uh, yeah. Well, that, that's awesome. So I, I have a, a question mainly because like it's something I struggle with. How do you stay consistent with with getting out so much content? Because like I feel like every other day you're you're posting something new, and I'm like I'm trying to keep up with it. And that's that's probably part of the Marine Corps motivation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and and the fact that I'm retired, that's, so that's I'll, be, awesome. I'll be honest. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I do have my obligations. I you know, mm-hmm. I got a grandson we watch, and I got my yeah. parents I take care of. But um, you know, I, I'm lucky. I've got a, a a forgiving wife that that tolerates my gaming. She doesn't she doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons or any of my games. Occasionally, we used to play video games together, yeah. but she doesn't have a real interest. Luckily, she tolerates me putting in the time for it. Yeah. And and if I feel the inspiration, then then I'll sit down and and you know, um, I mean, hats off. I'll be honest. The the two programs I use for making digital maps, mm-hmm. Wonder Draft and Dungeon Draft, yeah. they were probably the best investments I ever made. Yeah. And uh, it is so easy to make assets for them. Mm-hmm. And and the base assets, if if you if you if you put enough thought into the base assets you can actually create a lot of things from the base assets other than what they were originally intended for yeah so but uh, i just enjoy pay making maps so so that's why i i gotta make a little scratch on the side now that i'm retired yeah, yeah. so i've got maps up at a, on a on a on a kofi website but i'm thinking i might end up uh going over to um oh shoot i can't remember what the name of the <laughs> is it is patreon yeah, Patreon. Yeah. I was thinking on maybe setting up a Patreon okay. probably next year, maybe. Hey, that's awesome. I mean, you you have the skill in that. I know people are always looking for good stuff. And and I, I'm not just trying to boast you up because we work together. But I, and I said it before, I'm in love with the style that you make. It, it really yeah, is you. something else. And I, I definitely, I'll, I'll definitely put a link to, to your stuff. That way people can check it out. Cause it, it really is. It's beautiful and it's w- detailed and well done. So. Oh, thank you. You're, you're <laughs> welcome. No, I, like I said, I, you know, I, I didn't even, I just all of a sudden became enamored with, um, you know, digital map making. I hadn't done it until the pandemic hit, to yeah. be honest with you. And, uh, and then it was just, just, just for the fact that, uh, I started with roll 20 and I was like looking all over the place. I said, you know, I got to be able to create some more interesting maps than this. Mm -hmm. So that's where I found the software and started learning how to use it. It was, it's kind of funny though. The first few sessions of roll 20, when you've got a group of seven, seven people that, uh, you know, have never considered even using zoom or any, any kind of digital medium to all of a sudden get your group back together and up and play. It's yeah, it's (laughs) difficult. It really is. It was even stressful for me as a DM because I had to, I had to figure out everything. Yeah, you know I hadn't even done it. So yeah. and then I thought, what I got to figure this out? And what I got a game in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot different than in person games. So I, I yeah. Hats off to you for for and, also, and to you and to any DM who does it online that had to figure it out because it's yeah it's hard. It's pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still had some errors, you know. Yeah, things yeah. things showing up on the maps that uh, shouldn't have been seen by the players. <laughs> things like yeah, that. But, yeah, for sure. But we all have fun. 
Yeah. So no, I mean that's and that's that's the main reason for the game is to have fun. Of course, we love telling mm-hmm. stories, we love being together, but we're there to have fun. So mm-hmm. yeah. Sweet. Well, Chris, Crafty DM, thank you so much. I it's it's really been a pleasure sitting down and getting to know you some more and just to hear your thoughts and you just I feel like you just really understand the game and just storytelling. So thank you so much for for your words. Well, well, well thank you for bringing me on, and uh, I, it's it's a pleasure working with you. I'm looking forward to working more. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, we so I'll just like talk about the Dungeon Forge a little bit. We we both uh, do creative writing slash map making for the Dungeon Forge, and we're working on a Kickstarter that's coming up in August, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited for that just because it's 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 gonna be really cool. It's all sea themed, all pirates, and we're we're creating a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, so. and yeah, with the with the last one we did with the Turtles of River Valley, mm-hmm. uh, I think this one's gonna go uh, pretty far. I think, yeah. uh, I think I think between the two of us, we can uh, we can we can put down some really nice content. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I I I love working with it. You you you're able to come up with ideas like so quick. So it's great. Awesome. Well, thank you. Well, is it before we head off here, is there anything else you would like to, uh, you'd like to shout out or plug? Um, like I said, I, I, um, you know, you can check me out on my, if you're interested in any of my maps at, uh, Kofi.com slash crafty DM and, uh, check, uh, look for crafty DM over at world anvil. Uh, you know, anybody can go there and follow me and, uh, you know, grab a little tidbits about about my uh, my world, Volterra, yeah. and uh, just a just a, a big shout out to my wife. I want to thank her for nice. putting up with me and my my crazy hobby. And uh, you know, just uh, if if you know, shout out to everybody else out there that plays the game. You know, keep on keep on doing what you're doing. Enjoy it, and uh, you know, enjoy the ride and and uh, have fun creating. There you go. Well. Chris, thank you again so much. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be talking to you, to you soon. All right. You take care. Okay. See ya. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.